We have with us this afternoon Ms. Linda Hudson, CEO of BAE Systems. Thank you very much for being here, Ms. Hudson. Our first question today is, what are the characteristics of a great leader? Well, you know, we often have the obvious ones that people throw out in terms of uh, specific technical capabilities, passion, energy, commitment, that sort of thing. But I, I have three characteristics that I like to talk about uh, that are a little bit different, but over the years I've found truly distinguished great leaders from the more mediocre ones. And, and that's courage, uh, conviction, and accountability. You know, the courage to make the really difficult decisions, uh, even when you don't have a whole lot of information upon which to make them, the conviction to follow through and do what is necessary in order to complete what you start out to do, and then being willing to be accountable for everything. Um, you know, knowing that you and you alone are truly responsible for whatever happens. What are the greatest challenges you have faced as a leader? Oh, there are lots of challenges, but I think dealing with the people issues are over and over again the, the most challenging aspects of, of what you do, both on the good side and the, the bad side. It's unfortunate that oftentimes uh, in a leadership job you have to make the difficult people choices and let some people go. Uh, and on the positive side, finding a way to keep your really good performers challenged and, and eager to continue doing what they're doing. Uh, and really recognizing that people are what it's all about and taking the time, the energy, and the effort to work the people side of the equation. I find that more often than not, that's where most leaders fail. How did your engineering education prepare you for leadership? Well, engineering, I find, is a great foundation for just about everything. Um, it, it taught me to think, and I don't care what discipline of engineering that you're in, uh, learning how to approach difficult situations and think through the process of solving difficult problems is a very important part of of everything you do in life, and engineering teaches you to think. What other methods of leadership development were important in your growth as a leader? You know, I didn't have a whole lot of leadership development along the way. Uh, in my era, uh, developing leaders in a formal fashion really had not come into vogue. It was later in my career that I did have the opportunity for some structured leadership development. And the things I found most helpful were the leadership development programs that talked and focused on uh, understanding behavior, the softer side of, of doing the job, and the kind of thing you don't typically pick up uh, without someone helping you be aware of why people do what they do and how they think and, and uh, just what motivates them and, and how they behave. Also, the opportunity to interact with senior leaders in the various businesses I've been in I found to be very, very helpful learning how the big leaders think is really, really important along the way. What advice would you give to students who want to become great leaders? Pay attention to the people part. Uh, leadership is really all about getting people to do things. So the fundamental aspect of relationship building with your employees, with your peers, with your customers is, is what leadership is in my mind. And, and I don't think we stress that enough in, in our development, that it really is all about getting other people to do things. It's not about what you do. What can universities do to support leadership development? Well, getting back to the people part of it, uh, I think universities do a terrific job in teaching you know, the, the, the detailed aspects of the various fields, but I don't think we do enough teaching people about the softer skills um, whether it's leadership skills or just learning how to manage yourself, how to deal with the kinds of personal crises you're going to have, how to deal with failure because everyone will fail at one time or another, and how to, to move forward in, in difficult circumstances. I, I think we all could do a better job of teaching the softer side of how to get ahead in life. How has globalization impacted leadership? Oh, I think globalization has changed everything. Um, we used to understand the rules when it came to our various industries and 
what it took to succeed, and, and rarely was there something that was a true game changer or catalyst that took things off in a different direction. Now we're looking at things that perhaps have been produced in the United States for $100 being produced for $3 in China, and even with shipping costs, you know, vastly undercutting anything we've seen in our marketplace in our time. And we're clearly going through a shift where now not only are emerging economies and third world economies producing things at a cheaper rate, they're now developing things and then producing them. And they are moving very quickly towards state of the art in many, many different fields. And if we don't start paying attention to it, uh, we're gonna get left behind. So globalization in terms of the competitive landscape is, is crucial and all the thinking that we do, no matter what industry we're in. It also means we have to develop a different kind of leader, someone that's comfortable moving in and out of different cultures, uh, that we need to groom leaders that are expected to move around the world. Uh, we need to put more emphasis on language skills, and, and you know it's just not like it used to be where you could grow up and only pay attention to what's happening a few hundred miles from home. And, I find it extremely exciting, and I think these next few years are going to be even more exciting as we see India, China, Brazil, Russia, others uh, moving more and more into what we in, um, in this part of the world have always considered our domain. What key events or people were instrumental in putting you on the path to leadership? You know, it's, it's really hard when you look back over the, the many decades that, that I have the opportunity to look back over and, and identify a few things that, that really made a difference. And, and I guess I could break it into a couple of different chunks. Uh, growing up as a child in, in Central Florida, you know, I was absolutely captivated by the space program and airplanes and rockets. And, and then a little bit later, the, the whole astronaut uh, experience, I would have done just about anything to have, have been an astronaut, but didn't quite work out that way. What, what it did was, though, set me on a path of being very interested in, in technology and science. And, and so the first people, other than my parents, who were largely supportive of just about anything I wanted to do, I had a couple of teachers that were instrumental in my life. A math teacher in junior high school named Mrs. Haynes, who went out of her way to continue to challenge me and, and, and give me advanced projects to work on, even in the seventh grade uh, in, in mathematics. And she talked to me about engineering for the first time. And then a little bit later in high school, I decided to take engineering drawing when a, no, no a uh, girl in my school had ever done that before. And I had a teacher named Mr. McKnight, funny how you remember these names after all these years, who um, also became one of you know, the strongest supporters of me staying in the field. So that kind of got me into the, the technical side of the world. The leadership part, the management part came later. I really expected to be an engineer's engineer for the rest of my career. But when I got into industry, I found I liked the people part. I liked leading projects and leading tasks. And um, I would say two people were instrumental along the way. Uh, I had no female role models or mentors, so I was fortunate to work for some very enlightened men along the way. And uh, one of my bosses at Ford Aerospace, a guy named Del Parsons, promoted me into my first management job, which was quite a bold move. Uh, back in, you know, around 1980-ish time frame. And that started my career path in, in a management way. And later in my career, a guy named Gordon England, who happened to have recently been the Deputy Secretary of Defense, well, he was my boss and promoted me to be president of a company when I was at General Dynamics. So those two individuals really went out on a limb and did something that was very unorthodox and you know, set an example for me about looking beyond what you would normally expect to see. So you know, a few key people along the way that really made a difference. And it's made me realize that you can make a difference in somebody's career. If I can just follow up on that, obviously you're, you've benefited tremendously from having strong mentors. 
Are there things that you've done as a leader to institutionalize mentorship or mentoring in your organization? Or are there things that you've done to try to expand this sort of opportunity to others? Uh, not as much as I would like to have done. Um, and I haven't yet seen it done really well anywhere. Uh, institutionalizing mentoring and finding a formal way to do it and track it is, is something that a lot of us have dabbled with, but I don't know that anybody's really completely broken the code. On a personal level, I spend a lot more time reaching out and working with people uh, with a particular emphasis on young women in business and, and trying to at least share my insights and experiences with, with them. And we do, in fact, uh, often assign outside mentors to our high potential senior people as they're moving up through the organization. I think having a person to talk to is extremely important, but I haven't quite yet seen a good program that really institutionalizes in a way that I think we need to be able to do it. It's a challenging problem. How specifically has your systems engineering education contributed to your success? Well, I talked about how you know engineering teaches you to think. Uh, I think systems engineering in many respects is you know, the ideal uh, combination of skills and capabilities in, in, in its broadest sense because it is a curriculum that spans many disciplines. Um, and you're taught tools and techniques through you know, things like operations research and other classes that it is an extraordinary foundation for approaching just about anything in life and, and gives you the sets of skills and tools as well as the broad exposure to multiple disciplines in order to tackle just about anything you need to tackle. How has your systems engineering degree helped in your leadership endeavors? Well, I think when you, when you approach something that is as multidisciplinary as the uh, systems engineering program is, and as systems engineering is uh, in industry where you take very, very complex systems or platforms and break them down into component parts and then make sure it all works together when you put it back together, you, you can draw all sorts of parallels with, with managing people and managing organizations. Again, it's, it's the way you approach things, the way you can logically break it down into its component parts, and the fact that you had to multiplex over many, many disciplines in order to, to get the systems engineering degree, I, I think it's been very helpful in just about everything I've done. Ms. Hudson, thank you so much for, for being such a great role model and for your generosity and sharing your experience with us today. Thanks for giving me the opportunity.